You spend hours and hours applying to internships just to get rejected and ghosted because you have no experience. But how are you supposed to get experience if you can't get that first tech internship that will get you that experience? Bruh. In my freshman year of college, I felt the exact same way. But fast forward three years later, I figured out a step-by-step -step solution to this. <laughs> and now I'm a full-time product manager at Microsoft. I've completed multiple big tech internships and I've landed 25 plus interviews at Fortune 500 companies. So if I were in your place and I wanted to land my first tech internship, here are the exact steps I would take to do it. The first step is to attend hackathons. A hackathon is typically a weekend long tech competition where students work in teams of two to four to design, code, and present a final project. If I were you, I would go to the Major League Hacking website, look at upcoming events, and find several in-person hackathons close to your area and several virtual ones as well. Apply to these hackathons, wait to get accepted, and then start attending. And look, even if you're a beginner at programming and want to attend these hackathons, that's 100% encouraged. Because there are so many ways to learn the basics of programming, and my favorite way is through Brilliant, which is this video's sponsor. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. And I know, programming is not something you learn through lectures, but through hands-on problem solving. Which is why Brilliant is the perfect platform to do this. It has tons of hands-on, engaging content crafted by an award-winning team of professionals, teachers, and researchers from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. With Brilliant, you can get familiar with Python and start building your own programs on day one. It's a great way to build a foundation in coding, get experience with real-world applications, and learn to think like a programmer so you'll be all set for your first hackathon. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Basco or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Another thing to note is that when you form a team before or during the hackathon, there are various types of roles that you can take on. You can of course be the coder of your team working on the implementation of front-end or back-end code, or you could even be the product manager or UX designer of your team working on defining the project, interviewing users, designing wireframes, communicating with engineers for implementation, leading the presentation, and so much more. All you have to know is that you don't even even have to win the hackathon, you just need to fully complete the project. Because now that you have projects and experiences from hackathons, you're ready to move on to step two, which is creating a personal website. Because you want to take all the projects that you just did from hackathons and frame them as marketable case studies in your personal website. All you need to do is a quick Google search and you'll find tons of personal websites that you can get inspiration from. For example, I like to go on the Cofolios website because it has amazing examples of students with design portfolios and case studies that landed them internships at big tech companies. And once you've compiled this list of your website and portfolio inspo, go to your design tool of choice and start wireframing it. You can literally go through a 30 minute intro to Figma tutorial on YouTube and that will give you everything you need to know. Alternatively, you can just take out a pen and paper and draw out a low fidelity wireframe. After your vision for the website is complete, choose how to build it. Obviously, if you're looking for software engineering roles, coding is ideal. But if you want to save time, just use a website builder like Squarespace, WordPress, or Wix. And now that you have hackathon experiences and a personal website, the third step is to market yourself. Firstly, put your personal website in the contact information section of your resume. And frame your hackathon experiences as projects on your resume. And theoretically, if you took your hackathon project and turned it into a startup or a student organization to build during college, you could even frame this project into your experience section as a co-founder and your other role in it, such as a software engineer or a product manager. And when you list out projects or experiences, make sure you use the XYZ method, achieved X as measured by Y by doing Z, to quantify the impact you made via your project or experiences. Also, add your personal website to your LinkedIn header as a custom link. Put that personal website and or case studies in the featured section of your LinkedIn profile. Also put it in the projects and experiences section of LinkedIn. 
Then you can talk about everything you just did via LinkedIn posts. Create LinkedIn posts about your hackathon journey, your personal website launch, and anything that highlights your personal growth and impact in the tech community. This will bring you so much visibility and exposure. And now that this is done, the fourth and final step that I have for you is to land interviews via in-person conferences. You can still apply for internships online, but it is way easier to land interviews when you have direct in-person access to recruiters and hiring managers at career conferences. Look at Google conference scholarships and you'll see a list of in-person conferences where you can land and do on-site interviews for internships. You can get a scholarship to attend these conferences for free through Google, through your university, through student organizations, through volunteering, media passes, and so much more. And you can submit your resume in the resume databases for these conferences and get virtual recruiter phone screens or schedule on-site interviews for the conference before the conference even starts. Alternatively, you can also pitch to recruiters during the actual conference by giving your 30 second elevator pitch, handing them your resume and being direct in asking for an interview the same day or that week. Using these tactics helped me land interviews and referrals at every career conference I've ever been to. And as always, follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok for more career tips. Hit the like button if you want more videos like these. Subscribe, turn those post notifications on, and peace.